Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. My name is Dennis. I'm one of the team that comes to you weekly where we uh, give God the first. We, we endeavor to give God the first in all of our life. And we begin here by praying together, uh, reading His Word together, studying His Word together, and, and fellowshipping with one another via online and on Facebook. And we're just glad to have everyone here. We're, we're uh, gathering from around the globe, people from all different states, countries, and time zones. And it's January 25th, 2021 right now. It's a Tuesday. And we're in the uh, in winter. I won't say the dead of winter. We're in the, we're in winter, but it's uh, one of the seasons, and it's cold. But uh, man, it's great to be with you guys. You guys warm my day when I'm on here to get to talk with you and uh, read God's word. I'm I'm one of a team that's uh, in in the Bible project right here on Pastor Doug Page, where we're reading through the Bible, and we we've. we've uh, already been through the New Testament and some, some of the books of the Old Testament, but we jumped over to Genesis and we're reading straight through right now. And we're in Deuteronomy. As uh, a matter of fact, we'll be continuing reading today and uh, we'll start in chapter 26. But if you're what, in the meantime, if you're watching us live, hashtag live. If you're joining us at 7 o'clock hour, hashtag recorded if you're joining at any other time. And hashtag shared if you're putting this out on your social media page, whatever that may be. Uh, a lot of different avenues out there. We're thankful to uh, have these avenues where we can uh, read God's Word, we can discuss it, we can spread the gospel, if you will. And hearts and lives can be given to Jesus and we can become and lead others to become fully devoted followers of Christ. We're thankful for His Word. I'm thankful for His Word today. And, uh, Got some special things here today. I uh, want to pray with you at the end of this, but we're going to get started right now and read. Uh, start reading in chapter 26 of Deuteronomy. Pastor Brandy finished up with 25 yesterday. And uh, I put a title out here before this, uh, all, uh, First Fruits and, and Tithes, and this is of the land. And they're about to go into the land that God had promised them, the children of Israel. So it's it's close. They're getting close, and uh, Moses recounting this these things and telling them of the instructions, how to live in the land, how to, what to do as they take the land. So there's a lot of instruction here, and don't get bogged down in the instruction. This was good for the people. You wonder if they were taking notes. You know, I'd be taking notes. Wait a minute, did you say this or did you mean that? But they knew what he was speaking to them. And they had an understanding, and there was no misunderstanding as he told them the law, and they would recount the law, he would read the law, and they would live the law. So uh, I want to begin reading chapter 26 and in Deuteronomy. I'm going to get us a timer going here. All right, guys, read along with me. Thank you for being here, by the way. Good morning. Chapter 26, Deuteronomy. In the message version, by the way, once you enter the land that God, your God, is giving you as an inheritance and take it over and settle down, you are to take some of all the first fruits of what you grow in the land that God, your God, is giving you, put them in a basket, and go to the place God, your God, sets apart for you to worship Him. At that time, go to the priest who is there and say, I announce to God, your God, today that I have entered the land that God promised our ancestors that he give us. The priest will take the basket from your plant, place from you and place it on the altar of God, your God. And there in the presence of God, your God, you will recite. A wandering Armenian was my father. He went down to Egypt and sojourned there. He and just a handful of his brothers at first, but soon they became a great nation, mighty and many. The Egyptians abused and battered us in a cruel and savage slavery. We cried out to God, the God of our fathers. He listened to our voice. He saw our destitution, our trouble, our cruel plight, and took us out of Egypt with his strong hand and long arm, terrible and strong and great, with signs and miracle wonders, and he brought us to this place gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So here I am. I've brought the first fruits of what I've grown on this ground you gave me, O oh God. 
then place it in the presence of God, your God, prostrate your prostrate yourself in the presence of God, your God, and rejoice. Celebrate all the good things that God, your God, has given you and your family, you and the Levite and the foreigner who lives with you. Every third year, you, the year of the tithe, give a tenth of your produce to the Levite, the foreigner, the orphan, and the widow, so that they may eat their fill in your cities. And then in the presence of God, your God, say this, I have brought the sacred share I've given it to the Levite, foreigner, orphan, and widow. What you commanded, I've done. I haven't deterred around your commands. I haven't forgotten a single one. I haven't eaten from the sacred chair while mourning. I have removed any of it while ritually unclean. I haven't removed any of it while ritually unclean. I haven't used it in funeral feasts. I have listened obediently to the voice of, the, of God, my God, I've lived the way you commanded me. Look down from your holy house in heaven. Bless your people, Israel, and the ground you gave us, just as you promised our ancestors you would, this land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 15. This very day your God commands you to follow these rules, regulations, to live them out with everything you have in you. You've renewed your vows today, and God is your God, that you will live that God is your God, that you'll live the way it sh he shows you. Do what he tells you in the rules, regulations, and commandments, and listen obediently to him. And today, God has reaffirmed that you are dearly held treasure, just as he promised. A people entrusted with keeping his commandments. A people set high above all nations, other nations that he's made. High in praise, fame, and honor. Your peoples, your people, your your you are a people holy to God, your God. That's what He has promised. Chapter twenty-seven. Moses commanded the leaders of Israel and charged the people, "Keep every commandment that I command you today. On the day you cross the Jordan into the land that God, your God, is giving you, erect large stones and coat them with plaster." As as soon as you cross over the river, write on the stones all the words of this revelation so that you will enter the land that God, your God, is giving you, that land flowing with milk and honey that God, the God of your fathers, promised you. So when you've crossed the Jordan, erect these stones on Mount Ebal, then coat them with plaster. Build an altar of stones for, for God, your God, there on the mountain. Don't use an iron tool on the stones. Build the altar of God, your God, with uncut stones and offer your whole burnt offerings on it to God, your God. When you sacrifice your peace offerings, you will also eat them there, rejoicing in the presence of God, your God. Write all the words of this revelation on stones, incise them sharply, incise them sharply. Moses and the, and the Levitical priest addressed all Israel. Quiet, listen obediently, Israel. This very day you have become the people of God, your God. Listen to the voice of your God, your God. Keep his commandments and regulations that I'm commanding you today. That day Moses commanded, after you've crossed the Jordan, these tribes will stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these will stand on Mount Ebal for the, for the curse. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites, acting as per spokesmen and speaking loudly, will address Israel. God's curse on anyone who carves or casts a God image, an abomination to God made by a craftsman, and sets it up in secret. All respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who demands a parent I'll respond, who demeans, I'm sorry, let me back up. I'll uh, God's curse on anyone who demeans a parent. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who moves his neighbor's boundary marker. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who misdirects a blind man on the road. 
Paul responded, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who interferes with justice due to the foreigner, orphan, or widow. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who has sex with his father's wife. He has violated the woman who belongs to his father. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who has sex with an animal. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who has sex with his sister, the daughter of his father or mother. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who has sex with his mother-in-law. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who kills his neighbor in secret. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's curse on anyone who takes a bribe to kill an innocent person. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. God's, God's curse... Uh, God's curse on whoever does not give substance to the words of this revelation by living them. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. Let me read that one more time right there. God's curse on whoever does not give substance to the words of this revelation by living them. I'll respond, yes, absolutely. Chapter 28. If you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, and heart heartily obey all his commands that I command you this day, command you today, God your God will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. All these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because you have responded to the voice of God your God. God's blessing inside the city, God's blessing in the country, God's blessing on your children, the crops, your land, the young, your livestock, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, God's blessing on your basket and bread bowl, God's blessing in your coming, God's blessing in your going out. God will defeat your enemies who attack you. They'll come at you on, on one road and run away on seven roads. God will order a blessing on your barns and workplaces. He'll bless you in the land that God, your God, is giving you. God will form you as a people holy to him, just as he promised you if you keep the commandments of God, your God, and live the way he has shown you. All the peoples of, of, on earth will see you living under the name of God and hold you in respectful awe. In chapter, uh, verse 11, God will lavish you with good things, children from your womb, offspring from your animals, and crops from your land, the land that, that God promised your ancestors that he will give you. God will throw open the doors of the, his sky balls and pour rain on your land on schedule and bless the work you take in, in hand. You will lend to, to many nations, but you yourself won't have to take out a loan. God will make you the head, not the tail. You'll always be the top dog, never the bottom dog. As you obediently listen to and diligently keep the commands of God, your God, that I'm commanding you today. Don't swerve an inch to the right or left from the words that I command you today by going off following and worshiping other gods. Here's what will happen if you don't obey diligently, obediently listen to the voice of, your, of God, your God, and diligently keep all the commandments and guidelines that I'm commanding you today. All these curses will come down on you, hard on you, God's curse in the city, God's curse in the country, God's curse in your basket and bread bowl, God's curse on your children, the crops, your land, the young, your livestock, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, God's curse in your coming in, God's curse in your going out. God will send the curse, the confusion, the contrariness down on everything you try to do until you've been destroyed and there's nothing left of you all because your evil pursuits that led you to abandon me. God will infect you with the disease, wiping you right off the land and land that you're going in to possess. God will set consumption and fever and rash and seizures and dehydration and dip blight and jaundice on you. They'll hunt you down until they kill you. The sky over your head will become iron, an iron roof, the ground under your feet a slab of concrete. From from out of the skies, God will rain ash and dust down on you until you suffocate. God will defeat you by enemy attack. 
You'll come at your enemies on one road and run away on seven roads. All the kingdoms of earth will see you as a horror. Carrion birds and animals will boldly feast on your dead body with no one to chase them away. God will hit you hard with the boils of Egypt, hemorrhoids, scabs, and an incurable itch. He'll make you go crazy and blind and senile, like a blind person feeling his way through a lifetime of darkness. You'll never get to where you're going. Not a day will go by that you're not abused and robbed and no one is going to help you. You'll get engaged to a woman and another man will take her for his mistress. You'll build a house and never live in it. You'll plant a garden and never eat so much as a carrot. You'll watch your ox get butchered and no and not get a single steak from it. Your donkey will be stolen from in front of you, and you'll never see it again. Your sheep will be sent off to your enemies, and no one will lift a hand to help you. Your sons and daughters will be shipped, will be shipped off to foreigners. You'll wear your eyes out, looking vainly for them, helpless to do a thing. Your crops and everything you work for will be eaten and used by foreigners. You'll spend the rest of your lives abused and knocked down around. What, what you see will drive you crazy. God will hit you with painful boils on your knees and legs and no healing of or relief from the head to foot. Verse 36. God will lead you and the king you set over you to a country neither you nor your ancestors have heard of. There, there you'll worship other gods, no gods of wood, no no gods of wood and stone. Hmm. Oh, no gods. In other words, little g. There are no gods of wood and stone. Among all the peoples where God will take you, you will be treated as a lesson or proverb, a horror. You will plant sacks and sacks of seed in the field, but get almost nothing. The grasshoppers will devour it. You will plant and hoe and prune vineyards, but won't drink or put up any wine. The worms will devour them. You'll have groves of olive trees everywhere, but you'll have no oil to rub on your face or hands. The olives will have fallen off. You'll have sons and daughters, but they won't be yours for long. They'll go off to captivity. The locusts will take over all your trees and crops. The foreigner who lives among you will climb the ladder higher and higher while you go deeper and deeper into the hole. He'll lend you... He'll, he'll lend to you, and you won't lend to him. He'll be the head, and you'll be the tail. All these curses are going to come on you. They're going to hunt you down and get you until there's nothing left of you because you didn't obediently listen to the voice of God, your God, and diligently keep his commandments and guidelines that I've commanded you. The curses will serve as signposts, warnings to your children ever after. Because you didn't serve God, your God, out of the holy goodness of your heart in the great abundance, you will not have, have to serve your enemies whom God will send against you. Life will be famine and drought, rags and wretchedness. Then he'll put an iron yoke on your neck until he's destroyed you. Yes, God will raise up a faraway nation against you, swooping down on you like an eagle, a nation whose language you can't understand a mean-faced people, cruel to grandmothers and babies alike. They'll ravage the young of your animals and the crops from your fields until you're de you are destroyed. They'll leave nothing behind. No grain, no wine, no oil, no calves, no lambs. And finally, no you. They'll lay siege to, what, to you while you're huddled behind your town gates. They'll knock those high, proud walls flat, those walls behind you which felt so safe. They'll lay siege on your fortified cities all over the country, this country that God, your God, has given you. And you'll end up cannibalizing your own sons and daughters that God, your God, has given you. When the suffering from the siege gets extreme, you're going to eat your own babies. The most gentle and caring man among you will turn hard. His man among you will turn hard, his eye evil against his own brother his cherished wife, and even the rest of his children who are still alive, refusing to share with them a scrap of meat from the cannibal child stew he is eating. He's lost everything, even his humanity and the suffering of the siege 
as your enemy mounts against your fortified towns. And the most gentle and caring woman among you, a woman who wouldn't step on a wildflower, will turn hard, her eye evil, against her cherished husband, against her son, against her daughter, against even the afterbirth of her newborn infants. She plans to eat them in secret. She does eat them because she has lost everything, even her humanity in the suffering of the siege that your enemy mounts against your fortified town. If you don't diligently keep all the words of this revelation written in this book, living holy in holy awe before this, before this name, glorious and terrible, God, your God, then God will pound you with catastrophes, you and your children, huge, interminable catastrophes, hideous and interminable illnesses. He'll bring back and st- He'll bring back and stick you with every old Egyptian malady that once terrorized you. And yes, every disease and catastrophe imaginable, not things not even written in the book of this revelation, God will bring on you until you're destroyed. Because you didn't listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, you'll be left with a few pitiful stragglers in place of the dazzling stars in the heavens multitude you have become. And this is how things will end up, just as God once enjoyed you, took pleasure in making life good for you, giving you many children. So God will enjoy getting rid of you, clearing you off the earth. He'll weed you out of the very soil that you are entering to possess. He'll scatter you to the four winds from one end of the earth to the other. You'll worship all kinds of other gods, neither you nor your parents ever heard of. Wood and stone, no gods but you won't find a home there. You, you'll not be able to settle down. God will give, not, will give you a restless heart, longing eyes, a homesick soul. You will live in constant jeopardy, terrified of every shadow, never knowing what you will meet around the next corner. In the morning, you'll say, I wish it were evening. In the evening, you'll say, I wish it were morning. Afraid, terrorized at what's coming. Next, afraid of the unknown because of the sights you've witnessed. God will ship you back to Egypt by a road I promised you'll never see again. There you'll you'll offer yourselves for sale, both men and women, as slaves to your enemies and not a buyer to be found. All right, guys, we're finished chapter 28 there. Uh, The next reading will pick up, we'll be past our end, we'll pick up in chapter 29. I'm going to mark that as the next reading. So, chapter 29 will start next. And thank you guys for being here with me. I went a little bit over time, but I wanted to finish that. I knew that chapter was going to be long, but I wanted to finish it up. And uh, that way you can start on a new one. I want to pray with you. Thank you for being here, and uh, I pray you have a blessed day. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray you bless everyone in my hearing and everyone attached to them, touching them. Everyone that they, they're, they're, they're people, Lord, they're, that they're affiliated with, their families. Father, number one, I pray healing and renewal physically and spiritually. Lord, for peace as we rest in, in your love and in your power, and Lord, in your grace, your mercy, comfort in any loss we've had, Lord, comfort that comes only from the peace and then the healing that you give, Lord, that we receive that comfort and direction as we serve you faithfully, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. And I, Lord, I pray you just continue to let this word get deep in us and we have understanding of your word, Lord. And that we have, uh, that we do your word. We become doers of the word, not hearers on We love you and thank you. Lord, praise you and give you all glory for everything in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Love you guys. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.